What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Hot Freestyles Chop Up Series. I'm your host, Tally Spencer, and today we are chopping it up with the multi-talented Ty Dolla Sign. Welcome, Ty. Hey, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well, doing well. You look like you are big chilling over there. <laughs> right here at the house. Just woke up like an hour ago, and, um, you know, it's a good day. Happy to be here. Um, yes. Beautiful just, day. Well, thank you so the, much. This just came in the mail, by the way. What is that? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to do it right here on your show. Oh, okay. Unpacking. I'm, I'm going to repost this on Instagram. That's my BET award. Shout out to BET. You feel me? Shout out to Meg. Shout out to Nikki. Yeah, we in here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, congratulations. That's dope. That just came in the mail? BET award. It just came in the mail. Yeah. Your first BET award? Yeah. Oh, dang. So you just, okay. Well, that's dope. Do. do you have a, a trophy case where you put all the trophies? I do. I do. Um, I, was, I got basically everything but uh, an Oscar, and, uh, um, and that's my first BET. I still got to win a Grammy as well. So I'm, I'm going for the Grammys, the Oscars, and uh, I'm still going for everything else. Again, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, love I love it. All the awards, let's, let's manifest it. Let's speak it into existence. You know, obviously great. you are talented and I think you could definitely win all of those. An Oscar though, is that something that you would see yourself doing in the future? Acting? Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, I definitely have, I'm definitely a multi-talented guy and uh, I've got some things in the works that I haven't uh, announced yet, but be on the lookout. Okay, okay. Oscar award winning material. We'll be on the lookout for that for sure. Well, you know, first and foremost, I just want to say congratulations on the release of your latest album featuring Ty Dolla Sign. Um, it's amazing. From I've listened to it several times all the way through and I just want to say congratulations on that. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. It's it's an outstanding album, and I would love to get learn more about the process behind, you know, what it took to get all those features on the album. You know, you have a lot of people that you've worked with. Um, what was it like collecting all those features from everybody? Uh, it was just natural. It was just like regular studio days, studio nights. Um, for instance, like uh, Ego Death. That's like uh, I was working on Yandi, which was an album that Kanye was going to drop, but never dropped. And it, it ended up leaking all over SoundCloud and YouTube. And uh, while we were working on those songs, I slid in the Ego Death beat. I'm like, bro, I think you would be crazy on this. Played it for him. He immediately did his thing. So shout out to him. Shout out to Twigs. Shout out to uh, Skrillex, Serpent With Feet. Um, just regular studio days, you know what I mean? Where yeah. you know, I'll call whoever through and they'll add their parts. And, you know, it's not like when we go in the studio, we just work on one song or one thing. It's like we may do seven different ideas. And right. One song may drop this year and then next year I may drop, have the whole song put together from just an idea somebody laid, you know, last year or whatever. So it was kind of like that. Um, yeah. Shout out to everybody involved. Um, there's a lot of names to name, but it's all my peoples, and uh, it, it, was, it was definitely a great time putting it together. We, we put a lot of love into that album, a lot of energy, and a lot of patience, and uh, it's finally out, so I'm happy about it. Amazing. And absolutely, like you said, like all those people are people that you've worked with in the past and, the, and right now, you know, you've became kind of the go to features king in terms of, you know, being able to add something to anybody's hook and it being a fire outcome every single time. When do you feel like that kind of developed for you in terms of like you became that go to guy? Oh, thanks. Uh, I don't know how it happened. I can't explain it. But my best explanation is just God, just uh, sending these uh, vibes through me. And uh, I'm super thankful for it. And uh, I'm just happy to 
be able to feed my family and uh, make a career out of having the most fun time I can ever imagine in life. <laughs> right, right. And you know, this this album, um, I've seen in recent interviews that you've done where you've talked about it being something where you've transitioned into like that club kind of like hip hop music into something that's a little bit more mature and speaks to a different aspect of your catalog. So I know, um, you know, this was supposed to be the follow up to the Beach House series. And you originally announced that it was going to be titled Dream House. But, you know, right before the album released, you made it um, featuring Ty Dolla Sign instead. Why did you kind of choose to break the cycle of the Beach House series and turn it into something new? The Beach House series uh, is that it still can't come back, you know, and it's still my I still have that album as well, Dream House. But um, on this, this, um, I just had a dream, like literally like a week before the album came out that I should drop featuring Ty Dolla Sign. I just saw it like on a billboard or something in my dream and it was dope. And like, just the idea of like, you know, people know like when they see that, like what it's gonna be. So let's just make a whole project out of it. And I'm like, wow, I got all these songs. Cool, let's get them cleared. Let's, you know, let's finish it. Let's put it together and make it all one body of work. And like, let's make it like to where you don't even want to skip. You know what I mean? Let's make it to where it's just like a playthrough. And uh, from every ending to every beginning, it matched. Like you wouldn't even know it's like the next song until probably like number seven or number eight. So um, I think we conquered that. And shout out to all my fans. Shout out to Team Dollar. You know, I couldn't have done it without them. And um, I'm happy to be doing, happy to be doing this. Right. Right, absolutely. So with, you know, being able to focus on your project this time around, you've still been working, you've still been, you know, giving out features and being on everybody's song until this point. How do you kind of balance being able to work on your own project finally, while still, you know, helping out pretty much everyone else in terms of giving out features and things like that? Because like I said, like, if I go in the studio with somebody, best believe it wasn't just that one song like we did like four or five songs that night you know what i mean so one of them for you one of them for me one of them we might it might fit another artist you know what i mean and like i'll i won't even be on the song and you won't even be on the song or maybe whoever one of us might be on the song and a whole nother artist because i also write songs and produce songs for people you know what i mean so right i feel like like i said when god sends sends the vibe through, you gotta just put it down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gotta put it down, I love it. And um, as far as like the topics that you've been able to talk about on this project, I know you've always made sure to keep family very involved. You know, your brother TC is always a part of your project in some way. How important is it to you to keep your family involved in, in the music that you're making? It's definitely important uh, to keep family involved in anything. Uh, just like I couldn't do it without Team Dollar, I can't do it without my family. Um, and my brother's gonna be involved in anything I do, and I'm gonna be involved in anything he's in. And um, we're still fighting this case. Uh, we got a lot of, you know, uh, good help involved, and um, I'm happy. And and uh, thank you guys, everybody that got free TC to help me spread the message of you know, social injustice and and uh, thank you for just being here with us from then to, to forever, you know what I mean? Right, right. Did he get a chance to listen to the album? I'm sure he did uh, once it came out. I know they get, uh, they get albums in there. So <laughs> I'm sure he heard it. Have you spoken to him since the release? Not yet, not yet. Okay, okay, cool. I wonder what his reaction is going to be when he hears it be too. that'll be exciting and you know speaking of being with your family and and having them involved in everything that you do you've had a lot more time during the quarantine to be at home and be a part of your daughter's life as you mentioned in other interviews what has it been like you know watching her transition into high school and you know being able to to be at home with her more often it's been amazing uh I've definitely run into the teenage moment 
<laughs> the teenage moment. What yes. do you mean? <laughs> that, that any parent will tell you about, like, just all my older homies, my mom, they would all tell me about this moment when that, when they, you know, when a kid comes out of the kid moment into the teenage moment. And I definitely met Jalen, the teenager. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I got a lot of love for that kid. <laughs> She's, uh, her most recent report card, three A's, three B's. She's doing her thing. And it's, it's it's been crazy, I'm sure, for all parents and for all kids that are in school uh, to see her conquer this Zoom thing. You know what right. I mean? Like Zoom yeah. class and like kill it. And I'm proud of her. So shout out to Jalen. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And congrats to her on that report card. We see her yeah. out here. Um, do you feel like you've been able to kind of connect with her more often now that you're you're home more? She gets to see, you know, what you do every day and like you yeah. being at home and being involved in the music. How has that changed your relationship with her? Uh, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely been a, a ride, you know what I mean? But a beautiful one. And I love it. I love every, every bit of it. And I love having her come and sit on, sit on that chair back there and just watch me. But at the same time, it's like a passive aggressive, like, dad, let's go like do something else. You know what I mean? <laughs> like trying to pull me away from it. But um, it's great. It's great, man, to just balance, do this and be able to do it. And then especially at, at this time and be able to like really like get whatever I'm doing out and still be able to like go do dad time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. D dad time, like you said, is very important. Um, and I'm sure she appreci appreciates you too for being more involved and being able to see you more. You know, you're not out and about as often. So I'm sure yeah. she she's loving that too. Yeah, I remember she used to tell me, uh, Dad, why can't you just be like a uh, like the postman, the mailman? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you can be here every day. And I was like, damn, yeah, man. Like, I wish I could, and you know. Right. I got right. my wish. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure does she does she like really realize you know like how big of an artist you really are, or is she kind of just like you know? No, nah, she realizes she's she's with me everywhere. We we travel, we traveled around the world together, and she's been to everything. You know. Yeah. Um, she loves it, you know, and uh, now she's she's YouTubing. Everybody check out her YouTube, Jalen Crystal. And, um, you know, she's doing her thing. <laughs> right. I love it. I love to see it. And one thing I'm curious about, too, is, you know, your song from 2018, Something New, became a viral TikTok challenge this year as a result of the quarantine and people being at home with their families. Did you guys ever do a TikTok challenge to that song or did you learn the dance? <laughs> what is it yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I learned it we did it me and her uh me i don't know it didn't really go viral i don't know um if a lot of people saw it but me her and SZA had did one and uh oh, okay i don't know it, it came out on on Jalen's instagram so i don't know if it's traceable now but yeah i mean we did it one. it was pretty cool yeah, we could find it. I'm sure she was excited. She was like, oh my God, that's my dad's song going viral. <laughs> that was crazy because we had put the song out two years prior and uh, to see it go up then was just dope. And then even after that, just like a month ago, my homie Aunt Clement FaceTimed me and uh, he put Charlie Wilson on the uh, on the phone and Charlie started singing it. And then when you when you think of the history of like, the song, that's Charlie Wilson's song on Computer Love with Roger and Zap. It's the same bones, boom, ch -ch 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 -ah. it's the same thing. And it was dope just to see that full circle. Right, you know right. And you've, you've had a lot of full circle moments in your career, I'm sure, you know, from when you first started out making music to where you are now, you've been a very consistent artist in terms of consistently putting out music that's your sound, your own, and appearing on other people's um projects albums whatever the case may be can you talk a little bit about the importance of being consistent you know like the importance of longevity to where you are now 
Yeah, uh, consistency in anything in life will definitely uh, bring great results from uh, my experience and from me seeing any of my uh, my peoples do anything, you know, uh, from playing golf. Like I didn't see like my homies like start from nothing and then go crazy. I didn't see my homie Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco when I was a, when I was a young dude start out here going to Santa Monica College and you know my homie Big B taking him you know j just on off days to run around Audubon which is a middle school you know what I mean just run around the track all day all day all day and then he became Ocho Cinco I didn't see him. there's so many people I could name like Mustard coming to my crib and just mm -hmm. be a young dude and we bagging on each other like talking about each other's shirts and just, you know, just talking mess, like, right. and and he's a DJ and doing high school parties and then all of a sudden he becomes mustard, you know what I mean? YG yeah. coming through and, you know, just being a, a local dude from LA, from Compton, rapping, doing parties and then we go crazy in the world, you know what I mean? Anderson mm -hmm. Pack, uh, I seen him from the start, like, you know, and then blowing up to be Anderson Pack, selling out the Staples Center, which was one of the most am amazing moments in my life. Seeing Russ from like going from SoundCloud to selling out the Staples Center on his own, like without radio hits at the time, like that was crazy to me. It, it's, it's just so many people I can name. Thundercat, yeah. uh, being a bass player, like playing on all the old Saw Rock creative. I, I came from that, that circle as well. Uh, Saw Rock was my first feature. Uh, on that album up here, uh, uh, and then they took me to London or to Europe for the first time. That's how I met Kanye through them, and same same circle Thundercat came from. To seeing him playing bass on everybody's stuff to becoming this artist that he is now, one of the greatest in the world, and mm -hmm. it's dope for sure. Just yeah. to see those moments over and over, and that's all from consistency, for sure. Right, right. Being able to be consistent and being so involved in everybody's, everybody's lives too. You know, you've made an impact on a lot of people's different careers. You know, all those people that you've named, you've worked with early on being from LA, you know, you've had that, that staple of artists to work with. And, you know, speaking of being from LA and holding down the West Coast on a national level, you've recently been compared to Nate Dogg and, you know, with Snoop Dogg saying that you're his his reincarnation. How do you feel about that statement? Do you agree with it or how do you feel about it? Yo, man, it's an honor to be in that, that mention in that conversation at all. Uh, Nate Dogg is one of the greatest artists ever. Uh, and especially in my lifetime, and one of my biggest inspirations. And uh, Snoop saying it is top tier, man, top level, you know, top everything. So shout out to uh, Snoop. And uh, he's also one of, you know, my favorite artists, one of the biggest, you know, artists of all time. And uh, shout out to Snoop and, you know, the family. And uh, much love for that. That, that shit means everything. Yeah, yeah, no, that's an amazing comparison, I think, to make. But I also do think that <laughs> you've been able to you know, stand out in your own lane as well. You know, you've created a sound that's truly your own. And I think, you know, that really speaks for your for your generation, honestly. Thank you. And uh, uh, I couldn't have done it without my fans, Team Dollar. Thank y'all for everything. And uh, um, waiting from the beginning to forever, we're going to do it. And uh I'm gonna just keep on going the hardest that I can and always trying to advance and, and never uh, sound mediocre, never sound like anybody else, never sound like the last shit. Like always take it to the top. Right, right. That's something that I think Ty Dolla Sign fans can agree with is like no album sounds similar to the last or no song even sounds similar to the last. You always come with something new, something different. <laughs> when mm -hmm. I said something new just now, I just thought of thank you, son. <laughs> 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 right um but there's a few songs on the album that stand out to me uh, my turn is specifically one that i really love and i think is very relatable um you've also mentioned that you think it's one of your favorite songs from the album let us yeah. know what's the real meaning of 
it's only your turn. What do you mean by that? Uh, I mean, um, whether you're with somebody for, you know, a moment, like 20 minutes, you meet somebody and like y'all have a conversation or you know somebody for one night or you know somebody for a week, 72 years. And then, you know, whatever, like that time you had was your turn. So make sure you just do your best, you know, and make me happy. You know what I mean? I appreciate that time. If you love somebody, call them and tell them you love them while they're here, you know, because everybody has an ending point. So, you know, do your best with, with the people that you love. I love that message. And it, it really spoke to me as well. I'm just like, you know, that makes sense. And I think your, your music always has a message. <laughs> Thank you. Thank of you course. Sure. Okay, last question, and then I'll start wrapping up. But um, this is a little multiple choice pop quiz that we have for you. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Which of these artists have you not done a song with as a feature? A, um, Babyface, B, Fetty Wap, C, Eminem, or D, French Montana? I haven't done a song with Eminem yet, which I would love to use the GOAT, for okay. sure. Do you think you ever see that happening in the future? Yeah, I always said, like, uh, the only uh, rapper that I think is better than Eminem is Slim Shady. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, uh, um, yeah, it'll happen for sure. <laughs> what up, man? Holla at me. I can see it. Okay, maybe 2021. I can see that happening. Mm -hmm. But, okay, thank you so much, Ty, for taking the time. It was great speaking with you. Congrats on the album and much success for the rest of the year and the rest of your endeavors. <laughs> much love to you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Have a great day. You too.